It's a Wonderful Life is a classic family film and one of the great movies of all time. Jimmy Stewart plays this compassionate but very frustrated man who's gonna end it all. But then he's afforded a golden opportunity to see just how much his life has impacted on family and friends. So I'm taking the stubborn Officer Schwartz to a local synagogue for an unusual tribute. Steve was telling me that he sat down to write a moving eulogy for his grandmother who died four months ago. And it got me thinking, one of the tragedies of life is that how we end up being remembered is not really how we lived. What if I got Steve to think about that? What if we got him to crystallize the man he really wants to be versus the man he's actually becoming? We are gathered here today to mourn the passing and to celebrate the life of our dear friend, Mr. Stephen Schwartz, who died yesterday at the ripe old age of 252. Steve was a very special man, an inspiration, a hero, a New York City cop who risked his life for others. And in his family life, Steve was an even greater man. Steve was a model husband, forever telling his wife how fat she was and how much weight she needed to lose. I remember his deep countenance as he looked at the woman who bore his four children and said, am I supposed to be attracted to that? And what a father Steve was. I remember once sitting with him on a Sunday afternoon, having a nice cold beer, watching football, when his kids ran into the room and said, Daddy, let's go outside to play. And Steve cranked his neck out, looked right at his four beautiful children and said, maybe later. Steve had four beautiful children. And when his wife said, we should have more, Steve said, why? I have three cars and a bike already. Yes, we will miss you, Steve. We will miss you. His family, on the other hand, well, they didn't know him well enough to really miss him. It's scary to see yourself at what could be your own eulogy, what's said about you and what's remembered of you. Is that the eulogy you want a rabbi to give one day? No. He was a great husband. He told his wife she's fat constantly. Is that what you want someone to say about you? Nope. So I work with Steve to write a more appropriate eulogy. I was a soulmate. One more in tune with the way he wants to be remembered. Steve was a man. He was a man who loved his wife. He comforted her every day. He took her on vacations. It didn't make a difference where they went because his purpose was to hold her hand. His purpose was to make her feel loved. He was her soulmate. And Steve was a special father. He came home every night. He sat with his kids. He did homework with them. On weekends, he went out and played with them. More than anything else, Steve put his family first. And like all of us, his wife and his daughters loved him infinitely. How did that sound, Steve? That's pretty good. Is that how you want to be remembered? Most certainly. You see the contradiction, right? Mm -hmm. Does it make you think? Most certainly. You're a much more sentimental man than you are prepared to show. You have very deep feelings, very deep emotions, but you don't show it to your wife. I know I do not. What do you want to do now? Be a better husband and a better father. Do you really want a better marriage? Yes. Just go and be the man you want to be. The beauty of a message like this is that you can focus today on how you want to live, mm -hmm. not what you want said when you die. I can make a lot of changes in my life. I think it will be better. Everybody gets so afraid about how are we going to die? Who cares? How are you going to live is what matters. What I'm trying to do is to get Steve to think about his life because he's not thinking about it. All these things that men always say, I'm going to leave my wife, I'm, I'm getting divorced. They don't even think about the repercussions to them, their wives, their children, and to their legacy of the man they want to be.